Well, hello friends and happy hump day to you. I hope you're having a great day today. And I hope by faith that you're believing that God's gonna do great things in your life all day long today. Let me tell you something. If you'll just follow the leading of the Holy Spirit today, he'll guide you in everything that is in front of you. He'll guide you. He has a plan. He won't leave one thing just to your own thinking or imagination. If, if you'll let him lead you, he'll lead and guide you into everything today. It'll fit into his plan. And at the end of the day, you'll find yourself sitting in the winner's circle because that's how God operates for his people. Hey, welcome to the Wednesday edition of Take 5. Uh, this week, we are reading from 1 Peter chapter number 2, and we're dealing with the subject, Peculiar People at Work. Now, uh, this turned into a little bit of a series. We're going to end up carrying it on into next week as well. Uh, because we have found out so far that the workplace is a great place that God has given us to share the gospel, primarily with our godly lives, the way we respond and act and live at work. And then when people see the way we respond and live and act, then sooner or later that opens a door for us to be able to open our mouth and tell of the goodness of Jesus Christ and how he give us hope in the midst of this world. Let me read to you this passage from 1 Peter real quick, and then I want to talk to you some more about the workplace today. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse number 9 says, You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people that you should show forth the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Verse 11 says, Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims in this world, because our citizenship is not from earth anymore, it's from uh, eternity. We are to abstain from fleshly lusts that war against our souls and have our conversation honest among the Gentiles that whereas they speak against you as evildoers, they made by your good works that they shall behold glorify God in the day of his visitation. I want to read that 12th verse again from the Passion Translation because it brings everything around and puts things in uh, terminology that you and I would use today. It says this, Live honorable as you mix with unbelievers that even though they accuse you of being evildoers, they will see by your beautiful works and they will have a, a reason to glorify God in the day that he visits us. In other words, even though they say evil against you, even though they say things like, well, you're no different than me, even though they say that, by the works that you live and the life that you portray there in front of them at the workplace, that will refute everything that they're saying and that the life you live will draw them to Christ and then they'll give glory to God for the life that you live in front of them. Wouldn't it be great to know that you won people to Jesus Christ because you live so godly in front of them while at the workplace? Now, this puts responsibility uh, of evangelism where it needs to be, and that's on the body of Christ. We are responsible for carrying this gospel with us everywhere we go. It's, it's not just the, the meeting place at the church. It's not just the pastor. It's not just the evangelist. It's not just their responsibility. The meeting place at the church where the pastor and the evangelist then come and teach us that's to empower us so that we can do the work when God takes us out of the salt shaker. That's the church, by the way. When he takes us out of the salt shaker and he spreads us throughout this world and uses us to bring flavor to the world that is so lost and undone, that's how it's supposed to operate. Uh, when you read this text, you come to understand that's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to live such godly lives as we mix with unbelievers that they see Christ in us. Evangelism doesn't uh, just happen at, at churches like we think. Some does, but primarily it happens in the world, at the workplace, at home, and where we interact with people socially. Right now, we're talking about the workplace. Yesterday, we learned that, that work is not a result of sin like some people think it is. God designed us and created us to work. That was his intention from the very beginning. God uses the workplace to maintain the world, 
to provide for our families and our futures, and he uses it as a platform to, to win people to Jesus Christ. And it would be terrible for us to misuse a platform that God has given us wherewith to win the loss. You know, I really believe that God knew what the world was going to look like today. And I believe that he knew that we were going to spend over half of our lives with people that don't think like us and people that don't worship like us and people that need Jesus Christ. And I believe his intention was for the workplace to be a place where Christianity could be merged into society. And that's our responsibility to do that. We, we merge, we, we mix Christianity into society at the workplace because let's face it, we're there 40, 50, 60, some 70 hours a week. Why not use it as a platform to win the loss starting by living a godly example and then when they begin to ask questions, then you open your mouth and you share the goodness of Jesus Christ. Our main calling as believers is to be salt and light and leaven that God mixes into the world to bring a knowledge of Jesus Christ and of salvation. And peculiar people in the workplace is how God does that. That's one of the ways that he uses. Now, I know most Christians have this tendency that they want to separate faith and religion from day-to-day -day living. They they got this idea they want to neatly divide life into secular and sacred. But we were not called to do that. We're not supposed to do that. As a matter of fact, God called us to full-time Christianity, not just weekend sainthood. That's what we're supposed to be, full-time Christian. That means we live a lifestyle that exalts Jesus in his word every day, every way, and in every place, and this includes the workplace. We, we don't get to leave Jesus and the Holy Spirit at home when we go to work so that we can show ourselves and show our frustration and act all crazy. We don't get to do that, friend. We're supposed to live God-like lives even there at the work. When we're frustrated at work, when people push our buttons, when things don't go our way, even when we might have to deal with a little persecution because of our faith, that's even more the time that we should let the life and the light of Jesus Christ live, live or shine. Now I realize that like no other time, regardless of how far we've come concerning religious rights, there are seems to be an uneasiness about expressing your faith in the workplace. And I think mostly it's because we have the wrong perception about it. There's far too many people that still think that evangelism and ministry and Christian service only happens at a pulpit or in a church setting. But the fact is that Jesus did more ministry outside of the temple than he did inside the temple. You might want to make sure you heard what I just said I wasn't stuttering. Jesus did more ministry outside of the temple than he did inside of the temple. He ministered in the town square. He ministered at the market, in the countryside, at friends' houses. He even did it from a fishing boat. I did some of that yesterday. He did it from a fishing boat. And any place else that he could obtain a platform, that's where Jesus ministered. And so, friend, that's got to become something we do even at the workplace. God needs peculiar people in the workplace. Well, hey, I got to get out of here. My time's come and gone. I look forward to being with you tomorrow on Thursday's edition of Take 5. Until then, God bless you. Have a great and glorious day. And hey, friend, what do you say? Let's be peculiar. Let's be odd. Let's be strength. Let's be attractively distinct in the workplace and let God use us to bring somebody to a knowledge of Jesus Christ.